So welcome back to another episode of Fulzor. And this episode is going to be a little different because we're not going to look at the simulation. We're going to look to see how exactly logic gates are made using these bare bone components called transistors. And this video, we're going to explain everything about these logic gates. Unlike some of the other videos on the internet where they only explain how to make it, I'm going to go into full detail about how they work too. So prior to this video, I'm going to assume you know how transistors work, how basic, basic circuits work, and how resistors and batteries and all of that, how they work too, and how they perform. So the components that we're going to be using is an LED, um, the 2222 NPM transistor, quadruple two tra NPM transistor, um, 6.8 kilo ohm resistor, and a 68 kilo ohm resistor. So, uh, not too many components, but want to bring that out because it's not really in the schematics. Another thing too, I'm going to say before we get into it is on the schematics, I did flip flop the transistors. So a little backstory, transistors have something called emitter, base and collector. And the current should run from the collector to the emitter and the emitter has the little arrow but on my schematic i accidentally flip-flopped it on some of them so that's that is my fault i'm sorry about that but let's just get right into it okay so before we get started with the circuits um i want to look at these gates real quick to show that they do work so we have a nor a not and then an x or gate so the nor and the not share this one, and this is the XOR gate purely. So both of them are on. If we turn this pin on, then they turn off. This one, both on, they're both off. It's pretty simple. This one's not connected to the not gate, so it only affects the nor. Super simple. The XOR gate, one on, both on, it's off. There we go. Super, super um cool, actually. And then we're gonna explain in the schematics how they work too. So these are the other gates. We have the AND gate, the OR gate, and then the NAND gate. So if we turn one of them on, the OR gate co comes on, both on. Then we have the AND gate comes on and the NAND gate's always gonna be on unless both are on, just like this. So they do work. This is the AND and NAND gate, and I'm gonna explain how it's both of these at the same time. But like I said earlier, these transistors are flipped. So this is supposed to be the emitter, and this is supposed to be the collector. So I'll have a little caption up in the corner that says flipped to let you know when the transistors are flipped, because I'm not redoing these circuits. Um, but some of them I did fix when I was like writing them down. So some of them are not flipped and they are correct. But this one is flipped. So let's look to see how this works. So I have a little animation too. These green spheres are gonna represent the electrons. And before the animation plays too, the only resistor that's 6.8 kilo ohms is the one connected directly to the diode, just like this. All of these resistors and on every other circuit is a 68 kilo ohm resistor. So let's look at this animation now. So as the current leaves the positive terminal, it goes up through this 68 kilo ohm resistor into this third transistor to open it. And then the other electron goes out into the 6.8 kilo ohm re resistor and it flows through this transistor to the ground, so nothing lights up. The LED does not light up at all. And this output is zero, since it is hooked up directly towards the ground uh, after the resistor. So this node, you can say, is zero. But once we close both of these gates, then the electron doesn't go to the third transistor. Instead, there's an easier path to ground, which is all the way on the other side right here. 
So the electron, instead of flowing through the third transistor, it completely skips it and it goes to the ground this way. And that turns off this transistor right here and allows the electron to flow through the diode or the LED, effectively making this node five volts, which is high. And then the way we can make this a NAND gate is simply by removing this transistor right here. All we gotta do is remove it. So if we remove it, that means this node right here can be hooked up directly towards our LED. And like I said, if it's open, it's going to be high. And if it's closed, then this node right here is gonna be hooked up directly to the ground and it's gonna be zero volts. So super, super, super simple. Now let's go to the NOR gate, NOR gate. Okay, so these transistors are also flipped um, for the schematic. And let's look to see when both of them are open. So it's not really drawn right here, but this is the switches right here. These are the switches. So if the switches are open, that means the electron comes out right here, up through here, to this third transistor again, turns it on, so then this electron doesn't go through the LED, instead it comes back to the ground, nothing is lit, lit up. Now if one of them, or both of them are on, it's almost exactly as the AND gate, except they're in parallel and not series, so it doesn't matter if both are on, only one has to be. And that would be the electron would come out through here, open up transistor one or two, which would connect it to ground, which would allow the electron that flows after this resistor to want to go directly to ground and not through this transistor at all, because it would be least resistful to go through the collector than to go through the base. So electrons travel through the path of least resistance and it will go to the negative terminal and the LED would be lit on because that's the only way for where this electron can travel to thus turning this gate off so this would be a five volt node right here since electrons they travel um the least resistance but they also travel everywhere it's a little confusing but ho hopefully that made sense um and then yeah so the nord or the or gate how we make it a nor is the same way as the and gate we take out this third transistor right here and we hook the led directly up to this node right here and that would allow this to be high unless both of these are closed then this would be low which is nor here, yeah. so before we get to the, the hardest one we're going to look at the not gate real quick and this is basically a one switch uh, nor gate and if the switch is open the electron travels out the positive uh, through the LED to ground, super simple. This node's high, the switch is off, so the electron doesn't have anywhere easier to flow through. And if we close this, this gate turns on, so the electron, instead of flowing through the LED, it flows through the um, transistor, since it's easier, and then it goes to ground. Super, super easy. Now, the hardest one by far is this XOR gate. So, this animation will 100% clear it up a little bit better. Um, but yes, so we have five transistors. So I'm pretty sure in my previous videos, I said seven transistors for the XOR gate. But you can actually make it out of five now. So we have optimized this even a little further. So now we need to update some of our old schematics for a transistor count because... I made them effectively more efficient. So if you look at this, a lot is happening. Both these gates are open. Electron comes out right here through this resistor to the fifth transistor, turns it on, and then like the rest of them, there's a common theme with this. The electron doesn't flow through the diode. It flows through the transistor to ground. If we close one of them, it doesn't matter which one. If we close one of them, 
then the circuit changes. So, I'm gonna let the animation kind of show what happens, and you can see for yourself. So that's what happens when one of them is closed. Now, if we look at if both are closed, it becomes weirder too, because then both of the first and second transistor are high, which allows an easier connection to ground than through the diode. So it goes like that, and this fifth transistor is not turned on. Again, the animation explains it a lot better than I can. So I do wanna explain something too about this. Like the rest of them, if we take this fifth transistor off and hook the LED directly up to this node, it becomes a uh, XNOR gate. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word for a second. An XNOR gate. So that's how we would do it. And that's why those gates use one less transistor than their brother. Another thing I want to explain is why do we have this gate in the first place? So let's look at the AND gate because it's a lot clearer to simplify. If we hook these up just like this and then the LED directly from here to positive, it should be that if both switches are on, you can allow the flow through. So if that didn't make sense, I'm going to draw it real quick right here. just like this so if we look at this there's no resistors in this i know a very simplified circuit um if the switch was connected to positive for both of them these gates would be on and it would turn this on and if it was off then these gates wouldn't be on and this would be off so but why can't we use this as an output and that's because this would technically be floating so let me explain. This can truly, really never be on positive, I guess you could say, or negative, it would be floating. So floating means that it's neither fully connected to neutral ground or it's fully never connected to the positive. And that's exactly what this would be. So that's why we can't do this. Sorry, there's a train here. So if we use this as an output, it's only five volts really if it's connected directly to ground right after. So we can't use this as an output. And likewise, I mean, if it's negative, it is uh, connected directly to that, so it is zero. But the five volt would be the problem. It could never truly be high, a high value. So if we connected this up to another, let's say, like logic gate system like this, it, it couldn't it couldn't power this transistor at all because it's not hooked up directly to ground like this so we need this third transistor right here in order to make this either fully positive or fully negative no in between and that allows us to connect the multiple of these together in order to make a computer Okay, and before this video ends, I want to show one more thing. So this is a modified logic gate that I just made. And I thought of this concept as I was recording the video, so I didn't have too much time to think about it. But this gate uses three transistors. One more resistor, but it combines an AND gate and an AND gate into one circuit. So we get both of the logic features for the price of these three gates. And another way we could have done this is by making um, just an AND gate and a NOT gate too, which would be four, and it would also give us both features. But this one uses three and we can do it, which would save on transistor count if we have to put an AND and an AND on the same gate. So, 
this is on both of the switches are off if we turn both of them on then the AND gate turns on and then the NAND gate turns off so this could also help a lot with optimization and future computers that we design. So I'm gonna make a new series about how to make a computer with even further optimization since that is what this channel is about. So that's really it for this video right here. I hope you learned how these logic gates are actually made in real life. If you have any questions, likewise, just leave it down in the comments. Um, if it was confusing to, please leave a comment and I, I will clarify it. But like I said, I thought this video was pretty good. The animation should help a lot. And yeah, come back next week.